Hello guys, this is Damodoc82. I am uh, joined with Ion Mark 3 Say hello, Ion. Hello, Ion. Uh, we are doing an update video here for Dominion of Dama. Uh, today we're going to be looking at ships and planes for the uh, Republic of Free States, which is basically the United States in this campaign. Uh, we also got some surprises out there, just uh, teasers for the next faction that I am working on. But uh, let's go ahead and start off with uh, what we got here. This guy here is a scout plane that, that uh, J Dog actually came up with. J Dog123, the same guy who has uh, been doing uh, Finest Hour. Um, from what he told me, there's not really a whole lot to it, just like uh, it dropped us mine down here, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we're not really going for like stuff that's 100% historical in this. So, yeah. Um, it's just pretty much going to fly over its target and drop these little mines, and that's pretty much all it does. I uh, was going to say, it seemed like a, a different design style from the rest of your craft, and that explains it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm probably going to have to repaint it so it uh, fits in better with the rest of these craft. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But that shouldn't be too hard to do. So let's move on here. Uh, this right here is a heavy bomber that I developed. It's called the Ride the Dragon Bomber, I believe. I have this based off of, uh, I think it's called an O'Hanley bomber from World War One. Uh, this thing is pretty nasty. It burns through materials really fast, but uh, it's got 14 of these uh, dumb fire rockets. Uh, they are HE frag. Oops, that's not the button I meant to hit. And they are going to hurt like hell because I've seen just one salvo from this plane go through about 5 meters of uh, metal armor. And those are okay, going to be the strongest blocks in this campaign. That is actually kind of dangerous. Yes. I didn't expect you had that much performance, but then again, there is 12 of them. So, a big volley. Mm-hmm. Just so you guys can see the stats on this guy here. Um, it actually does about more like 80 meters a second. That's fairly cheap for what it does. Uh, I'm not too worried about uh, the material usage on this because it's going to have to circle around and it's probably going to regenerate all the ammo it needs before it comes back onto its target. Oh yeah, you probably want to look at the stats for this little guy here too. This is probably going to be the cheapest thing out here. Basically if you slap ten of these things together you'll have one bomber. Probably, yeah. That's a lot of duct tape. But yeah, I've just been trying to stay with uh, the World War One theme that I've been going here with the aircraft. Uh, I think I did pretty good with uh, the decals and um, the logo here on top. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I derped on this. Uh, did you say which faction we are reviewing today? Yes, this is the Republic of Free States, which is right, essentially you. like the United States in real life. So, yeah. Uh... Let's just shrink the blocks for a sec so you guys can have a look at the insides. Not really a whole hell of a lot to it. But yeah, this is probably why this thing is such a materials sink right here, and it's because this big old engine. Uh, it's also got some other engines here on the left and right. They're supposed to take up most of the load to try to make it more efficient. But I figure doing it this way to have some uh, redundancy built into it should one of them get shot out. Just makes it more of a nightmare, doesn't it? Oh yeah. And uh, I, with this faction, I have been avoiding uh, trying to use uh, the control surfaces too much and relying more so on actual thrusters. Of course, this still has the air rudders in it, but it doesn't really need them. And basically, all of its uh, movement control is done with thrusters. So, I guess we'll move on to the next one here. Alright, what's the next one? Uh, this one here is a rocket bomber. The Thunder Pick Air to Surface Attack Plane. Pretty cheap. 
I've actually been really happy with it, and so far it's the fastest aircraft in this entire campaign, which I'm okay with because um, I kind of want the uh, the Republic of Free States to have some of the best aircraft. But it's actually a pretty sweet little plane here. Um, it's uh, got these uh, HE frag thumper head uh, unguided rockets here. That does the bulk of its damage. Uh, of course, it's got the 60 millimeter auto cannons, and we'll have a look at the insides here. Has a little um, injector engine here. Not really a whole lot to it, but a very nasty little design. Yeah, no real redundancy for this one. Uh, looks like if the Sense takes damages, might lose power. Is that about right? Um, it'll probably lose a bit more than that because uh, one good shot would probably gut this thing. Mm, so it, it's fast, it's aggressive, but it's not going to take that much damage to take it out. Uh, not really, because uh, well, it's only one layer of metal. There have been a few places where I've been able to double it up, but. I think that's only in the AI here. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, just to maintain control of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was actually a pretty fun build trying to get this thing to work. Uh, I've been uh, hiding the detection in the uh, left and right wings for a lot of these, just putting like a pane of glass in front of them and putting a uh, a plate panels above and below. And I've kind of done the same thing with this guy over here too. This is a torpedo bomber, which uh, it's also a bit more than a torpedo bomber as you shall soon see. This guy also launches unguided rockets. Small rockets. Mm -hmm. I am approved. You actually gave me a lot of ideas on how to do those after uh, your four keys entry for a um, steaming pilot ship. That's where I kind of got the idea to do them. I was surprised at how accurate they were. Accurate, uh, plentiful, and actually reasonable firepower. Mm -hmm. um, especially if more of them connect with the target. Oh yeah, these will pummel right through the deck of most ships. I'll definitely strip that, some uh, blocks. Shame the Forkies didn't do as as well, but uh, eh, that's why it was being redesigned. Down here we got the torpedo. Not really a whole hell of a lot to it. Just explosive frag. Explosive frag. Just one big ish hit to supplement the uh, saturation from the rockets. Uh -huh. And it'll fire them both in the uh, same pass. Yeah, that's a. Uh, Good strategy, that one. Moving on, this is actually a fighter plane that I developed. The Death Tone Fighter. It's also pretty fast. Um, its main weapon are these two uh, advanced cannon machine guns in the wings. They're getting a pretty good rate of fire through them. 703 RPM. 20 millimeter. It Not takes bad, given the size of cannon. Yeah, it takes a few passes for it to shoot things down, but that's kind of to be expected because the uh, this is like the entire shell here. You thought you're focused on getting like a fast shell more than anything left. Just to make sure that it hits more often, yes. It's also got the 60 millimeter auto cannons here. I, for some reason, these designs just feel wrong to me. If they don't like have some sort of forward firing machine guns near well, the it's uh, cockpit, the, it's it's the stereotype for exactly planes exactly of kinds. Uh, I've also done some ACB fuckery in here to like make it to where whenever an enemy aircraft is within like 700 meters and within like a 20 degrees of um, like a forward arc it's going to slow down to have its regular speed so it can 
pump out more lead before uh, it's finished with its pass. Am I making sense? No, I get you. It slows down so the guns have more time on target for every pass. Exactly. It's actually a really I simple setup. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it does kind of need it. On the um, well, give, given the relative strength of the cannons involved. Mm -hmm. Of course, the problem is more time approaching also means more time it can be intercepted. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Mm -hmm. But it makes it a lot more effective against aircraft. That's for sure. Sure, it makes it less likely to overshoot them. Mm -hmm. So next over here we have the Kingdom Come aircraft carrier. Uh, the hull of this is actually the same hull that I used for the um, battle cruiser for Windsor. Yeah, Kingdom of Windsor. It has four of these anti-aircraft turrets. I believe they're going 40 millimeter. Yeah. Belt-fed autoloaders, uh, timed HE. Very, very nasty against planes. I gave it some anti-ship cap or capacity here with the some the simple casemates. Um, got a, a couple buffers here, here, and here. We've got some more of the casemates here on the side. Uh, we also got the uh, eight-inch cannons uh, in or these turrets here in the front and back. They're firing two meter long shells. Not really a whole lot more to it. Uh, this thing is designed to spawn in these three aircraft here. Uh, it'll launch like the first three of them and then after like a 20 second delay it's going to start just continuously spawning in more and more. So, yeah, it's just going to spawn airplanes until either it's destroyed or it runs out of materials. Um, it's meant to be kind of a boss ship. And uh, I'm st at some point I kind of want to have it um, make it some kind of a carry group, but I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that just yet. So we'll just have to wait and see. And any thoughts on this guy? Well, I mentioned this before we started, but... Mm -hmm. um, I do like the fact you've included one of the um, older style aircraft carriers, which is formed by taking another basic ship hull and essentially refitting it with a flight deck. And this is like around the time they were working out how to do aircraft carriers, mm -hmm. and before they'd really developed the actual dedicated aircraft carriers that came later. Yeah, from what I've been reading, um, aircraft carriers w weren't really as... It's very commonplace till sometime after 1920, but I figured all the technology was probably there would be safe enough to use it in this campaign. Um, yeah, they they were they were rare, but they were around, mm -hmm. and especially earlier on, there were more of these than like the purpose-built ones. But uh, yeah, it would be safe enough. The uh, earliest ones that they were actually like uh, for float planes that they would just pick up out of the water with a crane. Those were the first aircraft carriers. Technically true, yes. Though they were more like um, boats that had been augmented with a couple mm -hmm. of planes. Yeah, Rather like heavy them. cruisers that have been retrofitted to do the task, because it's always cheaper to take technology off the shelf than then creating something from scratch. Well, that's why the military tries to rely on um, stuff that is tried and true. Mm -hmm. Because, you know... They want it guaranteed to work as much as possible. Can't say I blame them. Reliability is an important thing when you're getting shot at. Alright, so moving on. This one you guys might recognize from a uh, time-lapse video. is like a three-part series. This is a pre-dreadnought that is based on, I believe it's the USS Oregon pre-dreadnought battleship. It's actually a super fun build. Because I have never built anything in this kind of style before. Oh, something that may interest you guys is uh, this rocket bomber over here. 
I was uh, using th this uh, pre-dreadnought battleship here. By the way, it's called the Freedom Call class pre-dreadnought. But uh, it it's able to pop these uh, eight-inch turrets in like one pass. Uh, it's got about three meters of armor, if I remember correctly. And it's got all these casemate guns here on the side. Uh, these turrets here, they're 8 inch. These ones down here, I believe these are 13s. Or maybe 13 and a half, I forget. Yeah, that looks about maybe 13 and a half. Not quite sure off the top of my head no, what kind of shells these fire. I think they're APHE. Yep, APHE. Oh, and if you're curious, the the, um, the eight inches on the aircraft carrier are uh, just a um, AP rounds. AP kinetic seems to be pretty powerful in this, honestly. So, I had any no, questions on that? I was going to say APHE it can be powerful if you get the shells right. Mm -hmm. That's I think. One of the big barriers to entry for that kind of shell is you do need to be a bit, a bit more experienced with the weapon systems before you can try and put one together. Oh, I completely agree. Or at least agree. put one together at a certain weight class, I should say. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you slap everything into it, then sure, it, it's going to work somehow. But then how are you going to fit a, um, a battleship-sized gun into an actual battleship? Mm -hmm. um, also, I thought you might like to know that um, James has come up. Oh, hello, James. He was in the uh, voice chat as well. Yeah, we're just uh, recording a video here for, uh, for uh, Dominion Dama. You're more than welcome to comment if you like. Uh, after this, we could probably start doing Some Days to Die if you want to go ahead and start prepping for that. Anywho, um, any other comments you want to make on this before oh, we move on, Diane? Um, not really. I mean, it looks like a rugged little ship. And as you say... It was durable enough that you were trying to use it for weapon testing on some of your planes. Mm -hmm. Also, by the way, um, Heitzmeister has just joined us. Oh, well. hello, Heitzmeister. Yeah, hello. I, I just made it. <laughs> That's okay. I'm glad you showed up. Yeah, we uh, we haven't gotten really too far into this. Um, I was just showing off uh, the uh, pre-dreadnought battleship that I made for a Republic of Free States. We already went over this aircraft carrier in uh, some of these planes over here you know, that uh, I've made. I'll just go over them real quick so you can get a good look at them. Let me know if you have any questions on them. Uh, not yet. Okay. I'll, I'll notify you once questions ar arise. Okay. But yeah, I got a fighter here, I got a torpedo bomber, I got a rocket bomber, I got this heavy uh, rocket bomber. This thing will go through like five layers of metal, by the way. Very scary stuff. Anyway, and uh, moving on to the destroy here, unless anyone has any questions or comments about the stuff that uh, that's over there. So anyway, uh, this one is the Blood of Kings class destroyer. In case you guys are kind of noticing a theme here, a lot of these are going to be named after uh, metal bands or Man of War songs. So, yeah, just so you guys know. Uh, this guy, it's actually pretty tough. Um, it's fairly cheap considering what it does. It's got 12 of these uh, torpedoes here, so you guys can see the stats on it. Wait, these are medium torpedoes? Yes. Or aren't they? Okay. Yes, these are uh, medium torpedoes. There won't be anything larger than medium-sized uh, missiles and torpedoes in this campaign. Was that directed at the audience or directed at me? Everyone. Like, I keep threatening <laughs> to bring in the bigger stuff. <laughs> um, this has got, uh, I believe these are five-inch guns I have here? Yeah, no, no, no that's a... 102 would be four-inch, would it not? I believe that's it. correct. Yeah, uh, 102 would be 4-inch, 127 would be 5-inch. So yeah, these are 4-inch guns. 
Um, I believe I have them using two meter long auto loaders. Yeah. And I, yeah, these are armor piercing from what it looks like here. Uh, we got the same with the turret on the rear and these two turrets here. Uh, I was trying to make it look like they were just mounted to the deck. I just kind of plopped them up here. Uh, use okay. some. Do what? Are they um? Are they on two axis turrets or are, is this a one axis turret? This is a one axis turret actually, and uh, I use decorations to um, make them look like that they're actually part of the ship. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I've also been experimenting a lot with using uh, uh, the um, more simple weapons mod, but I haven't really gotten too far into what's all in there just yet. Uh, we got some 37 millimeter AA guns here. We got another one here on the stern. Uh, it actually gets pretty good speed from what I can remember. That Yeah, that's not right at all. This thing does like about 25 meters a second if I recall correctly. But uh, yeah, this <laughs> the torpedo barrage from this thing is pretty nasty. Any questions or comments on this one, guys? I'll take the deafening silence as a no. <laughs> I was about to say. Um, I think you've covered everything that we might. Looks okay. like a um, pretty efficient little destroyer. And oh, yeah, I've been super if, happy with it. Let, it get, let it get in range, is going to really make its present felt. And over here, um, I believe everyone here but James has played World of Warships. So, uh, can you guys identify what this guy's based off of? Uh, one of the lower tier American cruisers, but the, I forget the name. The very first one, actually. It's uh, the USS St. Louis, I believe. This thing is just loaded to the gills with DACA. Uh, this was actually one of the first ships that I was experimenting with uh, some ideas that I picked up from uh, JDOG with uh, having the APS cannons built into the hull to be used as casemates. It's actually been working extremely well. So uh, they're not on turrets? Nope. Okay. Well this one here is. The one in the front and back, those are turreted, but the rest of these are casemates of one form or another. Uh, yeah, because you're. Yeah, and that that way you are using um, the elevation of the three meter mantlet mm -hmm. as your uh, horizontal traverse there. Yep. Uh, these uh, are all using a uh, six inch. It looks like 152. Uh, these are just using the one meter auto loaders, and uh, the uh, big ones in the front and back they're using two. That's why get, they got the longer barrels. Are you already going to add some of the Heitzmeister? Uh, no, actually, I haven't. I've never done this before. Try it; it's pretty cool. Yeah, actually, you've done something similar. That the elevation is too low, unless you have a very fast shell. There are um, armor-piercing shells, so arc isn't too much of a concern with them. Something of concern, as well as the stability of the um, firing platform. Mm -hmm. If it's rolling a lot, then that either will benefit you or hinder you at random. So. Yeah, that's the main drawback of that configuration. The fact there's not really much by way of um, upwards or downwards mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, that is an issue with this because you only get about um, about nine degrees either way of elevation. Of course, you have to remember these are turned on their side, so the azimuth and elevation would be swept around. And of course, we get uh, these uh, 130 millimeter casemates here on the front and back. Uh, just more of the uh, six inch casemates here. And we also have some of these uh, 102 millimeter cannons from the simple weapon mod. Uh, these are just inside the hull of the ship itself. It also makes a fairly decent anti aircraft platform with uh, these uh, AA guns.
So any other questions on this guy before we move on? Nope, not yet. Okay. Was that something you wanted to say? No. Okay. Uh, okay. I was just thinking that those casemates might compromise the armor, but then again, that comes with the type of the weapon system. I yes. Um, I have on later designs. I have been armoring the backsides of these uh, casemates that I built here in the side. I'll show you what I mean uh, when we get to the battle cruiser over here. But uh, before we do that, we got the heavy cruiser. This is the Dark Avenger class heavy cruiser. Oh, by the way, this guy is called the Courage class light cruiser. But the uh, Dark Avenger here, I actually built this in like a three-part series uh, time lapse. This has actually been one of my favorite builds so far. Um, I had a heck of a time trying to get the Trumbull home uh, shape correct, but I think I really pulled it off with this guy. It's using, I believe these are 8 inch guns. Yes, uh, 203 millimeter using 3 meter autoloaders. I believe I'm having them firing, uh, what is it, the uh, armor piercing shell? Yeah, just straight up kinetic. And these are on the front and back. Uh, we also have uh, all these uh, casemate guns here. I'm not entirely sure. I think, yeah, these are just all AP, honestly. Aside from these uh, guns up here, they're using flak shells. Uh, these 203 millimeter guns are using two meter autoloaders. I believe they're also armor piercing. We got some torpedoes down here as well. Nothing too fancy. Um, are these propellers there for roll stabilization or for... Uh, roll stabilization, yeah. that's it. Okay. Yeah, I've only been using those for stabilization and not flotation whatsoever. Okay. They, they, you know, one of the rules in the rule set for this is that they have to be able to float on their own. But uh, PID stabilization is fine, as long as it doesn't contribute to it floating. Uh, we get some octuple buffers on top of the hole here. Uh, we also got I believe, yeah, some uh, twin buffers up here on top. Has pretty good AA coverage. Any questions on this guy before we move on? Nope, not so far. Had a hell of a time trying to get the shape on this. I was going to say, it does look uh, pretty nice for the shape of it. Mm -hmm. But then again, I'm a sucker for sloped armor, so... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so next we have the battle cruiser over here. This is the Triumph of Steel class battle cruiser. And as you can see, it's got lots and lots of these casemate guns. So let's shrink the blocks here real quick. Not really a whole lot to them, but uh, they get about 20 runs per minute. Uh, let's see if we could have a look at the shell. Yeah, they're doing uh, HE warheads. There's actually a bunch of armor on the inside of this too to, uh, to prevent uh, ammunition blowouts from like chain reacting. I'll show you guys what I mean here. As you can see, I got them wrapped up in at least one layer of um, light alloy. And. These uh, cage masks here, these are actually, these are put together by J-Dog and I just kind of ripped them off of <laughs> that chip that we're going to be looking at next. He did an amazing job getting the detail on these. So J-Dog, if you're watching this, appreciate the help with that. 
that must have taken quite some time to set up, I imagine. Oh, no doubt. Uh, we got some of the um, 3.7 inch guns here. They're all using flax shells. We have uh, twin bofers here in the middle. Probably make a pretty decent AA platform. And these guns here, uh, these are like the only 6 inch guns, or I'm sorry, 16 inch guns in the fleet right now. And uh, oddly enough, this battle cruiser can kill the uh, battleship that we're going to be looking at next. But uh, this one was developed at a bit of a later time than the battleship, so gives it a bit of a pass. And over here on the back we have this quad torpedo launcher. This is probably carrying some of the nastiest um, torpedoes in the campaign so far. Been really happy with them. I'd imagine they're all rather short range. With, um, uh, I have this set for about 2,000 meters, I believe. Oh. Okay, if they can run that uh, far, that's quite good. Torpedoes have crazy, warhead, I mean. yeah, crazy long range with torpedoes. That's what, one of the reasons why I like them so much. They're very, very efficient as far as distances. And they automatically you know, get a um, double you know, their uh, allotted amount of time before they uh, despawn and explode. Any other questions? Okay. So over here, this masterpiece over here was built by the one and only JDog123, who has been a huge help with this campaign. And I've learned a lot of really cool things from this ship. Uh, I believe she's rocking 12 inch guns here. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Jadok's got a very detailed building style. Oh, and yes. If you haven't, then I would suggest checking out his custom campaign when, if you get a chance to. Because he's doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, I want to at some point. It just... I, I keep getting stuck building one of these ships for the campaign all the time, it seems like. But uh, he's got his... Uh, this is where I pretty much learned how to do these casemates. Uh, they're, they're done a little bit differently than what I have. Uh, I, I was trying to... Mine... I wanted to give them more armor. So that's why I did them the way I did. Uh, he kind of had these a little bit more exposed than what I'd like. But uh, I guess if they're just like tiny cheap guns like that, it's not too big a deal. Not saying there's anything wrong with that, it's just different. And he did a very good job with the Tetris for these 12-inch uh, guns. These fire very, very quickly. Uh, this also you know, comes with the uh, scout plane that's parked on top of this turret, as you can tell by this docking station here. Uh, yeah, he's getting about 19.1 RPM. That's pretty decent for a ship of this size. Um... Uh, doesn't have any torpedoes from what I could tell. And this thing will utterly kick the shit out of the Windsor Dreadnought. Alright, so anything else you guys want to go over or talk about this before I move on to the next? Nothing so far from my side. Okay. I'm rather impressed with the collection of ships. I'm sorry, one, one at a time here? After you, sir. Okay, uh, I was just going to say that I was rather impressed with the collection of ships you have. Oh, us. thank you. Mind you, this is still only one faction. <laughs> I've actually started doing the uh, Gothic Reich not too long ago, and uh, those two ships over there, uh, the... I'm going to show those up before the video ends. Uh, I'm not going to go over too much of them in detail, but uh, I, th I thought people would be interested to see how those are turning out. This here is going to be the Super Dreadnought for the um, 
Republic of Free States. And she is based off of a Nevada class battleship. Uh, she also launches a uh, scout plane from this back here. I just pretty much ripped it off of that guy. Um, the turrets, they are using, yeah, six, I'm sorry, 15 inch guns. There's three at the bottom, two at the top. Uh, we have all these twin casemates here along the side. A lot of people keep saying uh, that the superstructure seems a bit tiny for this, but if you go and look at it in its original configuration, it was pretty small. Uh, another thing to note is uh, the original also had cage mass, whereas I'm doing the tripods here. Tripods are just easier to do. <laughs> so that's how it ended up that way. Um, We also got some torpedo launchers down here. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, this thing can be uh, quite the beast, honestly. Though, something that's kind of crazy about it, if the, um, the winds are super dreadnought, will beat this thing easily. Which was kind of disappointing because I'm trying to do like a progression thing where the ships get harder as you go. <laughs> so I might have to revisit the uh, Windsor Super Dreadnought at some point. Anyway, any questions on this, guys? Nope. Okay. Like I said before, you're doing too good a job explaining stuff, Dan. Yes. How dare yes. you? Alright, so... For the uh, Gothic Reich, I like to go over this Bismarck Heavy Cruiser. Now, for those of you who were wondering why I went with the name Bismarck for a Heavy Cruiser is the ship that was originally named Bismarck, I believe it was Fust Bismarck or First Bismarck, I'm not entirely sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it was a Heavy Cruiser. And it's also a Sabaton song, so yeah. Uh, did I fudge the pronunciation on that at all, Heitzmeister? Um, uh, no, not really. Okay. It was alright. It, it was an educated guess. <laughs> it is. I, th I think it's pronounced first, Bismarck. Thank you. So, okay. Right. Okay. So, the Gothic Reich is going to be very, very heavily cram-focused uh, in the lore. Um, I wrote that uh, they are the first to discover you know, some new metallurgical techniques called heavy metal, which allows them to put these cram cannons on their ships because otherwise they would be too heavy. So that's how I've uh, written that into there. And uh, so far they're the only faction in a um, Dominion of Dama that are going to you know, be using crams on warships. Um... Kingdom of Windsor, they have a cram bomber, but uh, that's that's kind of an oddball. I'm not even sure if I'm going to stick with a cram on that, so yeah. Anyway, um, Heitzmeister, remember that trick that you showed me where you could uh, use decorations to hide blocks? Yes. That's what I did with this guy. Oh. Yeah, these are all elevation barrels. Yeah. And uh, what I did is I used that trick that you showed me, and then I just went over the top of them with regular cram barrels to get the uh, the look that you're seeing right here. This is actually uh, using the... Oh, what's it called? Um, the elevation barrels, so that way it can have like this huge azimuth for it to be a, a casemate. So these are all completely functional casemate crams. Okay. So is the barrel normally sticking out to the side? Yes, but it can... It's got about 75 degrees of motion, front to back, so they got a pretty good firing arc on them, actually. Oh, okay, so they are now in their resting position. Ah, that's... Yes. That's why you they are, are correct. so oddly aligned. Okay. Yeah, if I could just shrink the blocks for you guys here real quick. Oh, there you go. Two, four. Reveal. 
the uh, the casemates here are just frag. Uh, I believe I have them using a contact fuse. Yeah, time for first impact, uh, just to make sure that it'll detonate, but whenever it hits the water and bounces, it won't set it off. That's one of the things that I keep having problems with with uh, cram cannons, is um, if you put a inertial fuse in it and it bounces off the water, it'll uh, almost immediately explode. So I've been trying to use those contact fuses instead. Uh, these here are uh, 150 millimeter, I believe. Yes. APHE. And the one on the back here is essentially the same thing, it's just uh, Tetris a little bit differently. And what else? Um, I didn't put any torpedo launch. Oh no, I did. Sorry, I was thinking of the wrong ship there. Yeah, we have some more of the uh, explosive frag torpedoes. And we have these 88 millimeter uh, cannons here on top. These are, I believe they're anti-aircraft weapons I have them set up for. And we have the twin barrel A guns up here, 37 millimeter. It's done very, very well in my testing and it's able to kill the um, Republic of Free States um, heavy cruiser, so I've been very happy with it. It's also slightly cheaper than it too, I believe. So now for the finale, we have the Super Dreadnought for uh, the Gothic Reich. Just go ahead and turn off its movement here real quick so it doesn't run into stuff. This is going to be the Carolus Rex class Super Dreadnought. An obvious Sabaton reference, but you guys know I love Sabaton. And this thing is a beast. Uh, it's got all these casemate crams that I got going down the side here. It's a little lacking on the anti-aircraft. Uh, it still needs a lot of decoration work, but she is fully functional. Uh, these guns here, they go 2,000 millimeter. Lots of kinetic damage. Pretty high AP. It's pretty crazy watching this thing in action because you'll see it punch a hole in the side of a ship and it looks like it does no damage and then you see a bunch of blocks just fall out of the bottom of whatever it's shooting at. It's kind of crazy to watch. Wait, what's what's that what's what? reload time? Ah, I see, since uh, payload compactors are not allowed in this campaign. Okay, I was yeah, I figured wondering. that would make Krams a bit too overpowered. Ah, okay. That's, uh, that was actually a recommendation from J-Dog. And uh, my upcoming plans, uh, I think another video that I'm going to be making here probably later today or tomorrow is I'm going to have a another battle uh, with some of the campaign ships like I did like a couple of weeks ago. Probably going to do Republic of Free States versus Gothic Reich. So hope you guys will check that out. Alright, so any questions or comments on anything that we looked at here today, gentlemen? Can't wait to see it in action. I bet. Also, well, for those the full thing out, should be full time. yeah, um, for those of you who are watching the video and you want me to put up any of these onto the Steam Workshop, just let me know in the comments below, and I'll be more than happy to do so. But uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. This has been Damodoc82 with uh, Jim CDR, I am Mark Three, and Heitzmeister. Y'all have yourselves a hell of a day, and keep your hammer high. Later.